Mechanican.com. It's a social network for car, truck, and motorcycle enthusiasts. The goal is to include anyone who is interested in anything with an engine and become the spot for you to hang out. For car, truck, motorcycle enthusiasts. What if you're a lawnmower enthusiast? Maybe you like semis. It's all good. Mechanican.com has got you. Anything with an engine. It's got the same kind of functionality as most social networks, like creating a profile, adding followers, creating or joining groups, and direct messaging. But what separates Mechanican.com from other social networks is the garage and projects features of each person's personal page. On the projects features, you can showcase anything you own with an engine. As you modify it, you can throw any car you have in the garage and showcase what you love about the car by writing some info and posting photos and videos. The Projects section gives each person the opportunity to share with their followers and the public anything they're personally working on or someone is working on for them. If they want to share how they installed a supercharger in their Mustang, Projects allows them to create a project for the install and write out detailed information of how they performed the install as well as posting photos and videos to highlight what they did. It's uh, it's helpful if you're looking uh, to how to do these installs and if you want to share your ride and what you love about it. Check out Mechanican.com. This episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast is also brought to you by Dylan Optic Sunglasses. You know those sweet sunglasses I'm wearing in every video? Some of them are metal frames. Some of them are plastic frames. They all have different colored matte finish lenses. Well, those are Dylan Optic Sunglasses, and they are the official eyewear of the Smoking Tire Podcast. They look good. They feel good on your face. And most importantly, they really help protect your eyes. If you work in a harsh environment, if you spend a lot of time driving, if you're out in the desert, you're up in the mountains, I say Dylan Optic sunglasses. They, they really, honestly, at the end of a long day, my eyes feel way better if I'm wearing these things than not. And also, if you buy these Dylan Optic sunglasses using the link at thesmokingtire.com, I will send you a free t-shirt for supporting the people who support the smoking tire. It's all very nice. Lastly, Beeline Coffee is what I'm drinking. Uh, I drink it every morning. Hannah drinks it. Zach drinks it. Um, it's, it's going around the Southern California car community. Everyone from Hoonigan to Cameron Weiss, all these guys, we're all drinking Beeline Coffee. Um, it's delicious. These are car and motorcycle enthusiasts to the core, um, and they are also coffee enthusiasts. They've come up with Beeline Coffee, which is car-themed coffee. That sounds kind of silly. What do cars and coffee have to do with each other? Oh, wait. I get it. Cars and coffee. Ah no, for real. Beeline Coffee, the beans are delicious. That's what it's all about. It's about the beans. And these guys source beans from Ethiopia, from Africa, from, uh, the, uh, from Jamaica. Where else have I gotten beans from? Costa Rica. Uh, Ecuador. They get beans from all over the world and they sell this stuff. It's, the roasts are great. Um, and you can tell on their website, they do flavor profiles. So you know what you're getting. It's sort of like wine. It's great. They've even got a monthly uh, subscription service if you want to get new coffee delivered every single month. Uh, and if you do, whether you want to buy one bag or 10 bags or all the bags for a year, use code TST at Beeline Coffee and get 15% off and free shipping. Uh, that's code TST. Very easy for our friends of the Smoking Tire podcast. Beeline Coffee is good for you. Scientifically, I don't know if that's true, but it tastes good in your mouth, and that's what's important. Check out that Beeline Coffee. Uh, now, this podcast is a good one. Uh, our old friend Patrick Long, for, uh, Porsche factory racing driver. Uh, I affectionately call him the world's fastest ginger, and uh, one of the guys behind Luftkigut, as well as the new Luft Auto. Uh, we're about to nerd out on safari cars and, uh, and other kind of Porsche goodness. Um, this is a fun episode, so enjoy. Uh, the show with Pat Long and uh, the Motor Affair podcast host Patrick Stevenson. The two Patricks are in the in the studio for this one. Enjoy. 
Hey everybody, producer and co-host Zach Clapman here. I just wanted to let you know that we had a couple of audio problems with this show, so we had to cut some sections out of the podcast, unfortunately. Um, it was an issue with Wirecast and Telestream uh, during our teething phase with this all, all this new gear. We've since fixed it, but uh, it was definitely frustrating to see. We had a lot of audio spikes that would have blown your eardrums or speakers out, so the best move for everyone was to cut these many moments out of the show. Uh, most of them happened later in the show, and I'm going to do my best to surgically remove them without you noticing. But if it feels like you missed a couple seconds of uh, a conversation, that's probably why. Or you just stop paying attention. So without further ado, here's the show. Pat Long. What's up? Welcome to the Smoke and Tar Podcast. Thanks for having me back. I thought I offended you and was never going to be back. Offended me? Yeah, just lame and too, no, too, no, 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 too no. corporate with my answers. No, you don't offend me. I think it, I think it can be difficult to interview racing drivers because they have sponsors that and that they base their career on it, and that's the nature of being a racing driver. So I, don't plug my sponsors. What you're saying? No, plug them. <laughs> can I? Can I? Can we play? Can we have fun today, though? Or do we have yeah, to be just, stiff? We don't have to be too stiff, right? No. We can play. No. He's not wearing the uniform. So you can. You're not well. You're wearing a cool Andal shirt. No, I, like the, I want to be commended like, for avoiding that stiff joke that was there. It was very <laughs> easy, <laughs> but it's early. It's I just it's want a little I bit. Know, of I know daytime show. Zach doesn't have the jokes. Patrick Stevenson, the Hello, Motor everybody. Affairs in the building, and Pat Long, of course. If you don't know by now, is the world's fastest ginger. That's right. Porsche factory Shortest driver. <laughs> yeah, Luft Auto. You're a constructor ish. we we celebrate. <laughs> a, cele a celebrator, no, no Celebrate. constructor championship. For celebrator you. of Luft. Yeah, I sure, I sure don't build cars because I can barely change a tire. So no, but you know what? You build with Joey, and he builds fucking cars. Yeah, I put people does. together. You put people together. We, we consigner. You know what? Who Ralph Collaborate. Lauren, yeah. the, the the great fashion designer Ralph Lauren, always talks about that he can't sew anything to save his life, but he knows where to find the best fabric, and he knows where to find the best seamstress, and he knows how to package it and put a label on it and present it in a store, and that's why he's who he is. You I mean, don't think anyone can do everything very well. You know, I think if you, if you, no, you could be an tough. amazing it's fabricator, tough, yeah. but <clears throat> it's at the odds of you being able to build the best engine and the best cage and yeah. the best suspension setup is really, really, you really You ever meet some really super slim. freaks, though? I've met some super freaks that can do it all. It's rare. Yeah, you hate those people. You find them once in a while. There are yeah. well-rounded people, but if you're like, I want to build the best car in the world, right. you're going to be able to do every single facet of no, the car no, perfectly? They'll have some other horrible flaw, like Jesse James. You know, <laughs> Jesse James will build you something sick from like a pile of junk, you know, then, but he's going to like bang Nazi hookers <laughs> and you're going to find out about it. <laughs> you know, he's going to cheat on America's sweetheart. That's, you know, there's two sides to every coin. That's right. What do they, what do they say? You can, you can build it cheap fast or, and or well quality, yeah you or, only get two of the three you gotta uh -huh. pick you gotta pick there's no yeah. one who's perfect but many that think they are no and i think uh a lot of people who try really hard and have well intentions get shit on too okay even sometimes by people like me but uh it's good to have you back man nevertheless i'm, I'm happy to do this show good to be here we've had way too many talks at uh Trankus about crap that we need to God, I Keep you know, on. I don't want to blow that show up beyond where it needs to be blown oh, up. Sorry. But, I, but I do love that Leap show. Yeah. No, I love it. Yeah, I just yeah. went to uh, Sunset GT in Beverly Hills. You ever been? No. Do you know what it is? Is that a show? It's a new show. Yeah, hmm. and a new and show. Full disclosure, uh, I uh, I was actually hired as an appearance by uh, by O'Gara Coach, and they were nice. so nice. They bought. Uh, the McLaren store in Beverly Hills. O'Gara oh, now owns yeah, that yeah. store. Yeah. So to celebrate, they're now doing the Sunset GT Cars and Coffee. Cool. And it's totally Beverly Hills because it's at like 9.30 in the morning. It's not at like <laughs> 5, you know, and it's in Beverly Hills, not in the canyons. Yeah. And uh, there is an assortment of... Uh, Freshly leased exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I was gonna say, what's the, what was the best part of that, and what was the worst part of that show? Or so no, I mean together? honestly, the best part was uh, there were a lot of nice people, um, and the and uh, there were like if you want to see the hyper cars, that's what there was. Right. There was like a Wyra and three Koenigsegg. There were three fucking Kon you know really and three P ones. You know. Celebrity name drop last yeah. week. I'm in the canyons. I'm following. <laughs> I'm following a G, purple GT3 RS, mm -hmm. and I have a friend from out of town 
who was in for Radwood in the car with me. Yeah. And I go, fucking Caitlyn Jenner drives a purple GT3 <laughs> RS and lives up here. And was it? And this GT3 RS, I'm on Encinal Canyon Road, and I tell you this car did not exceed 40. Except for that one straight uh -huh. right in front of where the golf course was. Yeah. Where... <laughs> Hammer down to about a buck 25 and then back to 40 for the whole rest of the way to Canaan And I got up to the light and I go Watch this and I rolled up next and sure as shit Caitlyn Jenner uh -huh. rolled on the window Hey, Caitlyn, what's up? And, and it's kind of puzzle goes. I know you I'm like, a friend of Jeff Dunham's whatever Yeah, and uh, and I, I I was so tempted to be like Didn't you podium at Sebring? Yeah. <laughs> 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 like What's your excuse? I don't care if you want to wear a dress, but God damn it, drive that GT3. <laughs> right. Properly, Caitlin, please. Don't. I was in my 911. Yeah. Like, you don't. <laughs> you see a 911 behind you, you're going 40, you don't You don't give a point by? It's the new view. Point it's the new view. <laughs> all the way through. Damn, man. As well. He's being politically correct, not speeding in the canyons. I've only ever had positive experiences with that human being right up until then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening with you, Pat Long? Hanging out, just uh, it's the short off season. Yeah, I'm um, trying to get our heads around our little startup wild child car event, and uh, which is like, bl is it blown out of proportion yet, or is it depends who you ask? I mean, if you look at the trajectory of one, you know, a Deus. I mean, look, think back to fucking De Deus has Deus Ex Machina is a coffee shop in Venice has parking for about nine vehicles. Right. right? <laughs> that was the first thing they said is, "Are you nuts? You yeah. can't do it here." And we we're like, "Oh, that's easy. You just yeah. like every morning over there, you just bleed into the Thai food parking, and then the guy shows up at ten. And he's like, what the? Fuck? Yeah. Why don't they? There's that, like twenty Porsches in his parking lot. Like, yeah. oh, Why don't they cut yeah. that Thai food guy in? I, that's what I said. It's not like he's selling food. We should just go buy them out and just keep it, keep them in the kitchen. And just, make, true. just make it a card. Why don't we be like, homie, do you do eggs? Like, yeah. He probably gets an offer Here's on some that breakfast place. burritos, man. His property taxes this, are like a thousand a month. Yeah. He's loving it. Dude, this guy's been there since like the 70s probably. And his, he could sell his piece of dirt for $3 million. Yeah. Wow. Two days yeah. probably to use as a parking lot. Exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, the Luft, uh, Luftkegolt. Is that yeah. what? Yeah, they, that was strong. Luftkegolt. Yeah, well, it's any interpretation you want. I don't, Luft, think, the, unlike, I don't think the Germans Luft. feel that way unlike about Porsche, it. Porsche, the people who will fucking ha t take yeah, yeah. your head off for saying Porsche yeah. have no problem with anything you no, want. We like the attempts, but yeah, Luftgekult. And uh, that which is a set love of air-cooled in yeah. the German, roughly? Well, yeah, it's, it's air -cooled. just air-cooled. Oh, it's just air-cooled? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was love of air -cooled. Yeah. We, we, we thought we need, to, we need to bring some German uh, flair into the name of this show, and for for better or worse, now it's sort of a description or a hashtag that's kind of taken a life of its own, and yeah, everybody beyond who's, the yeah, uh, they just sort of use it for whatever they want to describe as. as how fortunate for you, good or bad, I guess. Yeah. I don't no, know. That's are you kidding? We'll take it to be there. That's that's <laughs> we'll free <take> publicity. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, because if we did our official, homework on the trademark, uh, you know, so <laughs> right, official. I was gonna say because then you no longer own like kind of the narrative of it. Yeah, if people but, start using it, so I mean, in the end, if push comes to shove, if someone wants to sell something, then they've got to call us first. So as long mm -hmm. as you got the merch rights, yep. you're all, you're good. You're good. We're feeling all right about that. So, but you went from like twenty cars to like a hundred and something to like what was the last one? It was big. Yeah, the unofficial number was a thousand, <laughs> uh, but the Whoa. inside the gates was, you know. Wow. Yeah, I know. I, I would call it w what we knew was there and was sort of registered on our books was around five hundred, and then there was the great thing about the port is you had all these auxiliary parking lots that yeah. broke out into their own little shows, which we've always that's wanted. always fun. Yeah, yeah, that's always fun. I remember at the one I, I I think I was out of town for the the port one, but the one at. Um, before that, Modernica. Yep. The, yeah, yeah, Modernica. Yep, Modernica. Modernica. That one, like you know, I got thrown off to the side there. But but the the cars that were not Porsche, you know, I was like in my Mustang. That the cars that ended up in my little lot were neat. Was yeah, really, really cool stuff. Yeah, we had um, business owners. It was Vernon downtown, and and they heard that their whole fabric, their whole setup was just overrun with cars. So these guys started showing up in the middle of the event. Uh, demanding cash on the spot for all the cars oh, in really? their parking lot. So <laughs> I was literally taking uh, t-shirt sales cash and just, just forking it to them of cash. and just wow. getting them to go away. Because we're going to have muscle. it all tied. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, it was, it was me and, and a bunch of cash. But yeah, in the end, you know, we, we hired the Vernon Police Department because we had an alcohol license for the day and they had to be there um, out of uniform. So that's what kept everybody from getting towed is those guys uh. were kind of just gave a nod to their, their colleagues who were in uniform and said, just leave it be, even though all the, the landowners were calling oh, and saying, get it, all these cars, including this fox body off the, <laughs> <laughs> the land. Even the IRS? Yeah, yeah. Ev- everybody was... Uh, yeah, well, it's, that it's was got lying around the though. block. This time it was lying around the whole port. It was, was it? We were trying oh, to get rid of those lines. It was it was huge. Okay. I mean, I went to three and four and three. You're in downtown and it was two lines around two separate blocks, like all the way down um, to major streets. And this one going to the port was three lanes wide, like <laughs> <laughs> like six blocks back. <laughs> But that's hey, entry. Everybody's what trying to do? get in, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things. Good problem. Good thing mm-hmm. all the cars are air cooled. Yeah, right. Of yeah, right. <laughs> None of them's, you know, I'm sitting in line of the Mustang at Radwood going, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Got about five minutes till it starts seeing steam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in the club, though. So now I can come. That looked fun. Huh? I was out of, I was, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, you're Radwood in, in looked our, fun. Yeah, I'm in your, your in club, club now. Yeah, I was and you're in my club. Now you're in our club, our little 90s club with your 964. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. it. Was I was out of town or I was in town, but on another event. And uh, those guys wrote me and I was like, damn, I'm, I'm bummed to miss it. Yeah. There was some like super early morning Porsche shoot that morning. Right. The same morning um, as Radwood. I, I was actually in Fontana with uh, a group of Red Bull uh, young athletes or racing drivers. And oh, we fun. were taking part in a 12 hour karting race. Oh, and, kick uh, ass. Oh, cool. yeah, so I was signed up almost a year in advance on that and we was were it at the cart that. track or yeah. at the not in the infield road no course? it was at the cart track it's called machissimo it's oh, been around for 10 years yeah 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 and you know go-karts <laughs> are fun racing. you know you go to k1 and yeah. you do it for nine minutes and you get out and you're like i have arm pump well an hour and 40 minutes in a go-kart yeah, and you gnarly. feel all kinds of crap oh yeah. my god it's we used to do it have you been to gpmy in new york the yes. indoor place it's that we did and they would do enduros there and and i i think my longest is 45 but i was done at the end of 45 yeah and now we're 40 in a cart is even for you is gnarly yeah and everybody's ballasted to 200 pounds if you're over 200 pounds sorry oh, but you must um, be so frustrated by that <laughs> no it's, it's good because then then if you're it's quick equal. no one says oh it's because you're the mm-hmm. size of a 13 year old you uh-huh. know but <laughs> they used to do that in our enduros they would ballast to the heaviest dude which at the time was me and i, and I would smoke these fools and they'd complain it was the ballast like, eh. yeah your <laughs> weight your weight moves it's my weight more is equally even. distributed yeah. uh-huh. you know versus all these big chunks of tungsten but an hour and 40 in a cart is hard compared like what's your longest stint in like a race car three yeah yeah three hours so it's twice as physically grueling as a car yeah i mean everybody knows it's it slams your ribs your feet hurt from pushing on the pedals you know mm-hmm. it, all, all those type of things in the cart is never going to fit you perfectly because mm-hmm. they're glorified rental carts that we're racing. Yeah. Um, Are they so, like Sodies or something? I don't even know what the chassis maker was, but yeah, they're four strokes, but pretty quick. Uh, there's a, a regular series out there. Cal Speed does, and uh, yeah, they do like a good a job. Driver, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, the they're same guys. carts that, you can rent when you show up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I've driven those carts. Yeah. They're fun. Yeah, yeah they're, they're really good. Yeah. Do they, they, they put fresh tires on them all and stuff and try and even them out? Or? They're pretty well maintained, and, and what makes it fun is, is that every time you run out, you get about two and a half hours on a tank of fuel. Mm-hmm. When you need to be refueled you essentially change carts oh. so you don't get stuck with a great or a not so great oh, that's cart. Cool. so that nice. kept it fun and yeah yeah it's it's tough i mean we were we were not really in the top five um with th- four people who do racing on a regular basis or that was great English, do, but do a lot of guys who race gt cars and stuff show up and do it or is it mostly pro carters there was um a vast range of different kinds you know Brian Deegan showed up. Uh, my teammate was uh, Mitchell DeYoung from Colbo Rallycross. He had off-road rallycross sports cars. But most of these guys are pretty avid carters, uh, you know, young, fast guys who race two strokes on the weekend. But we're coming over to do this enduro race because it's a once-a-year affair that gets a, a pretty good crop of drivers. God, I wish there was anywhere closer to the west side to do real karting than K1. fucking... K1. Look, the <laughs> people who work there are so nice. Electric cars suck dick. <laughs> they okay. do. Yeah. You, they they decline over the course of mm-hmm. like a 10 minute session. Yeah. That's how is that acceptable? I think they can adjust the speed of them as well, like remotely. Yeah, they can they turn you down, stink, they can turn you up dude. a little bit. You have to have gas cars. Did you ever go to Dromo one? Yeah. That was good. Dromo one fuel was dope. indoors. Yeah. Orange County is like the first, I think, SoCal indoor yeah. experience. That was good. It's not we did there it. anymore, is it? No, it's yeah. been gone a f- quite a few years, but we did an indoor 12 hour race there. I think that's kind of where this 
I don't remember if there's a connection to this Machissimo race, but we started right after the Supercross race, which was literally right around the corner, Anaheim Stadium. And uh, it started at about 10 p.m. and ran till 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. So Whoa, we raced through the night. And, Jesus, uh, dude, was there was... another Supercross race on <laughs> Sunday after that? <laughs> no. The people who did the triple header, you're like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Those, are, those the card enduros will they'll beat the shit out of you. Yeah, it's like brutal. everybody's all keen to drive and thinks it's great, and then four hours in, it's like, oh, you can take my stick. Yeah, yeah your <laughs> second double, you're like, fuck that, dude. Yeah, exactly. You wearing like rib protectors and stuff, or no? Yeah, but it's still you know beat you up. Yeah, but it's, uh, I got to a point where when I got out of my my last double stint, I couldn't really get my arms to ninety degrees. Ooh. Like everything was pretty fried. <laughs> oh, so. Wow. Shit. Yeah, it was good. I think at that uh, the chump race we did to VIR twenty four in August, I think Lee King did three doubles or four doubles in 24 hours like he did because he drove for two different teams what? he did an obscene <laughs> amount of driving yeah and oh. I did my longest stint ever during that race too I think I did a 225 or something like that wow. uh, like from day into the night fuck me dude how do you race at night that yeah is that's scary, the hardest part of the job scary yeah. shit it's it's easily the toughest part especially I mean, yeah the visibility is not great we don't get to build up big light bars or any of that so you're running oem you know headlights and are you kingdom, serious my kingdom for oem headlights what? well yeah. positions <laughs> i mean we've got a little no, bit I more mean, bulb strength but we don't get to put big light bars and all of that you know big big technology the prototypes do but the gt cars even run that yellow lens mm -hmm. which identifies different classes uh, but the side note is make it the headlights like worse 25 percent mm -hmm. of the light power you know yeah. that's that makes it even funnier when you see street car guys driving around and they put the yellow lenses on because they're like nah man it's like race cars. Yo, it's way better. And it's like, hey, no, it's not. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Picture I post on my Fox body. Some fucking Yoko's going, why don't you put tints on your fucking headlights? Why? I'm like, oh, that. It's so bad. This is no one who's ever driven a Fox body. You drive a Fox body at night. Your first thought is not these headlights could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> they are the worst headlights ever put into a car, possibly. Yeah. But the how the, what, what does it take to get good at racing at night? Just like. Mem like, do you have to get to the point where you could drive the track literally with your eyes closed? Yeah, you lose a lot of visual references, so you you start to work on off of sound and timing and rhythm and uh, sort of trusting. Like, oh, the back straight is thirty four seconds. You know, yeah, flat. yeah. You're not actually consciously thinking about seconds, but you know, after you've been in sixth gear, you know, maybe you're in sixth gear for 14 seconds. One Mississippi, and, yeah, two exactly. Mississippi, <laughs> like, three Mississippi. Even if you're looking around and then you realize, oh shit, this is about the time when I should be lifting and jumping on the brakes. So. Yeah. But you no, know, the other part that's really tough is that the light ebbs and flows. So you might have a section at Le Mans that's really well illuminated, mm -hmm. and then you go back out into the dark on the Molson, and so your eyes your sort eyes of adjust, to, yeah, and then you come back into this you know corner, and everything's just bright, like illuminated for TV lighting. or the, for the crowd. So wow. it's not easy. And then a lot of times, your, your headlights, you're trying to get the right directional point. So you've got your sub lights at the bottom, and you might push those out so you can actually see an apex, mm -hmm. like but corners, you still yeah. want to see ahead of you because you can't spot braking boards, et cetera, other references that you might otherwise use. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of tracks, they're not illuminated or reflective. So yeah, you, you, you start to rely on other things. Is, is there an amount of time that is kind of accepted by teams, coaches, drivers, the, the decrease in or the increase rather in lap times at a night, sh night stage uh, or night stint versus daytime? Is it like everyone's like... You lose about half a second. Or no, because this is that's a good question, but it's tough. The usually the the temperature goes down, track temp goes down, air temp goes down. So you're making more downforce, thicker air. Your engine's happier, so you should be going quicker. Yeah. Even though you can't see anything, and shit. so that's like I said, yeah. Back to your experience with with the with we're driving the, like shitbox cars. Yeah, like well, that not, is the, like you said. You said oh we got OEM headlights. My kingdom. Yeah. For an, well, like let's say I mean nine eleven is a good example. You get uh, standard, you know, I don't, well, I don't know if it's standard, but available on a road car, uh, the headlights that turn. When you turn, do, do race cars get that? No. Uh, and, and Is that specifically banned or they just save it, they don't use it for weight? It might be, it probably has to do with weight and reliability if you, you know, have any issues with, with the, the movement um, mm -hmm. over a long period of time. But yeah, that many corners for, you know, 12 hours straight. I, well, I don't know the answer. Race at a tight course, that could prove... Yeah, like that helpful, could be really. Actually. It's probably not allowed by some technical Nurburgring, regulation. Nurburgring, that could be super helpful if you don't crash into anything. Yeah, is well, it, I can tell you, I have way more headlight strength on my street 911 than I do in the race car, and I would wish it not to be that case. Is it HIDs like projectors, or is it just the basic light? It's mm. it's an HID bulb, They're I believe. HIDs. Like, okay. yeah, They're but it, just for, because of draw and yeah. and strength. But again, it's that. I think the single biggest point is that we can't add any additional. Yeah. Um, 
or the lens. They may be the LED filter. at this point. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you're pa- you're past my. Uh, they pr- they might be LEDs because they well, probably run sense. the Euro spec lights, which okay. I think at this They're point LED. are LEDs. It's definitely. Someone's yeah. gonna call me out on that shit. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll find sure. out. Someone knows right now. <laughs> Someone knows they're screaming at their fucking That's iPhone. Right. <laughs> like, how could you not know? Because I yeah. really need to understand how my headlights are made. <laughs> well, I mean, can you imagine back in the day, like when the cars were less reliable, the safety wasn't there. Like back in the 60s Lamont and the headlight technology oh my was god like, well, these are just above oh. these are four candle power <laughs> yeah. four candle yeah power. You're, you're on a six volt setup just yeah. Like, yeah running 24 hours with two drivers yeah. one of whom is probably drunk <laughs> the other yeah. who's the other who's on diet pills one's drunk yeah. and the other's on speed like, yeah. let's fucking do this man <laughs> yeah they win can you imagine 917 <laughs> down the straight you at, no chicanes speed? no yeah. chicanes you've had a go in one of those have you yeah unreal as scary as it looks I mean, sitting on fuel tanks that are not, you know, in, in reinforced, and yeah, the the flat twelve, um, pretty pretty unbelievable, but um, not that hard to drive. Uh, a nice engine curve and good gearbox, decent brakes, but physically more difficult than I thought. A lot of bump steer. Your position, you're really crouched down. Your knees are at your wrists. Even for me, your head's sort of touching the roof, so you're really Wait, sort of your crouching, head's compromised. The roof. My head, yeah, and yeah. I'm slouching. So. so Matt, you can't fit. No, no, not even. No, no, I wouldn't even. I, I actually tried once, and I it's not even close. Yeah, no. If you oh, look you at them, the you don't open. want to fit. I could drive one of those dowers with no fucking roof, the ninth spiders. Those but are I, awesome. yeah, I look like Shrek in there. <laughs> <laughs> but those, I mean, so it's really just more of a, uh, if you don't think about the fact that if you graze something, you're dead. Beyond that, it's actually fun. Yeah. Um, I mean, we weren't, I wasn't racing one. Certainly if I was at Daytona and going <laughs> hammer and tongs on the high banks, I'd be thinking if a tire goes down, this isn't going to end well. Your feet sit out as the impact zone uh, nice. on the front. So, you you know, you see guys who, who hobble around. I mean, Scott Pruitt, Hurley Haywood, these guys have a forever limp because they were reconstructed in the 70s, 80s from frontal impact. So Jesus. those days were pretty gnarly on that side. A journalist had one of those at Laguna Seca and he either missed a shift or something happened yeah. and he blew the motor and the guy fucked fucking sued him really sued i didn't him. know he sued him he yeah. sued him into bankruptcy wow, wow. yeah you back hole an original case on a blow yeah. a hole in the side of original case of 917 he didn't just like he didn't like he he it was bad it was like it was pretty gratuitous hmm. on it was like there was like punitive damages on top of just the, the car it was pretty brutal it made it would make me very nervous to get anywhere near one well of them we've actually talked about that i mean what is the actual law or liability when Shit. someone gives you the permission to drive their car mm-hmm. uh, at, what, at what i mean there's probably different rules with inside the gates of a racetrack when you all sign that waiver yeah. but even on the street if someone says here's my car yeah. and you go out and you know, well, huck ask, the thing. Ask, ask him. I, my, I mean, honestly, that I, I assume responsibility. Right, I do. Because you, you gave permission, even I, his verbal permission. No, 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 no. No, he says. Oh, you assume responsibility. See, I missed this yeah, chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have for, so for a, my career. I operate under the "you break it, you bought it" policy, I, and I've written two checks. Neither of them were like, you know, life-ending checks. Sure. But one of the checks wiped out a week and a half worth of work like i was on a work trip that was a week and a half long and my entire i cracked up the car a little bit and all the money had to go and i had to keep working (laughs) it sucked (laughs) but but it happens shit happens but i mean fuck me 917s like yeah don't miss a shift you want to roll the dice i don't if you're if you're going to be the guy who sues the journalist though you probably shouldn't be the guy who's lending out cars exactly yeah Yeah. that guy should have known before the dude got in a car that he wasn't prepared to not be a complete cock about the situation <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> yeah. The guy who the guy who I wrote a check to was cool. He was like lightly annoyed, but I settled it right there, and then he was fine. And he said, "If you ever come back, you can drive one of my cars again, no problem." Hmm. And he was cool. So that guy was the kind of guy who should be lending cars to people like me, but not not this other guy. I don't think, and I don't remember his name or. Anything else, well, huh? it's the hard part when you're when you're getting an opportunity to drive a car like that, and yeah. this guy has all the money into it. Yeah, but I I, f- I feel more on on the line of what Patrick's saying is that you gave him the keys to the car on a racetrack. He blows the motor up. Like the motor could fail on its own. Yeah, not, not because of the journalist's fault. Also, like I completely agree with you. And you're a racing driver, so you have a different mentality. You know, a racing driver is told to make this car go as fast as it will go most of the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Whether we're we're 
trying to find out how quick it'll go or we're developing it, shaking yeah. it down. Um, you it's know, a completely it different goal set from what I do with the car. But that's getting back to that story <laughs> of like, if it's, if, if it's a journalist driving a car, it's for a story there, you're, you're there's a, a self, um, you know, objective there for the owner of the car in some, whether yeah. he's being paid or he wants yeah. the coverage. So it's like, he's kind of signing up for the risk. I've, I've, I've seen, there's been a few situations. One friend in particular of ours, who's been a good friend is, is, is a kindness of their heart kind of guy who has lent me not only a four GT, but also his Countach and his oh. Pantera. He, Dave, Dave, you're out there. That's a kindness of your heart guy. Most of the other people want something out of it, mm -hmm. so I I'm with you there. Mm -hmm. So where and and, and if then if they're going to roll the dice on getting whatever it is publicity that they're looking for, that shit could happen. Just don't be such an asshole. Punitive, <laughs> punitive. You know what I mean? They offer to fix the car. You okay? Yeah. Here's how much it costs to fix the car. You cover that. Yeah. But punitive is pain like, and suffering. Yeah, it's not like he ran over the guy's fucking daughter. No, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like he missed the shift. Like you think he wanted to do that? Like fuck this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Money shift the thing. Anyway, tell me if you can about the mid-engine 911 race car. Yeah, um, what's that like to drive? Pretty wicked, actually. Yeah? Um, the the biggest change. Everybody wants to talk about weight. So what happens when you shove that engine forward? Well, actually, what happened from a driver's perspective is, is I had a hell of a lot more downforce in the high speed corners because now we could work with an underfloor. Before the 911, the engine sitting right where you want that diffuser, uh, all of the aerodynamics yeah. that come from the floor of the car. Now the designers and the engineers could extract a lot more grip. So we were at Porto Mau in, in Portugal. There's this final corner that comes up over a, a hill and it's a fast, you know, maybe top of fourth or fifth gear flat out. And the thing just drove like a prototype compared to GT car where you sort of need that moment of direction change uh -huh. and then, you know, get on the throttle. Can you then run a smaller wing too? Because yeah. you, so they run a lower, a lower, yeah, you can wing. run lower drag setup because yeah. you're making more downforce mm -hmm. below. Yeah. So does it actually weigh any, does it weigh more than the old car? I don't actually have the, I'm not a numbers guy, as you've quickly sussed out, but I, 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 you've got minimum weights in yeah, in the yeah. GTE class, so I don't think it was much about weight. It's just uh, more aerodynamic efficiency and being able to have more space to work with on that. What and, about uh, getting power down out of corners? Because that's always sort of the 911's thing, right? Yeah, the wheelbase increased, so the high-speed stability increased, but I, do, I remember it wasn't changing direction in the tight hairpins as kind of crisp as a shorter wheelbase 911, so a little bit little bit less there but kind of the give and take of of when cars are getting you know lo longer wheelbases huh high speed but overall, versus low speed more fun or less fun to drive than the old car more fun you could rag it um push it harder in the high speed uh low speed you had to be a, a little bit more patient but i think the uh the, the net gain was definitely in the high speed corners and aren't most of your races have more high speed corners in the series you're running in right you're not running on a ton of short tracks yeah, other than street street courses. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, but yeah. but yeah, the high speed you're gonna make you're gonna make the time in the high speed, and then of course working for the tire war uh, of making tires last. The 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 sanctioning bodies have pushed cost savings as kind of an extra challenge to teams to make the whole weekend with fewer sets of tires uh, to spend less money, but also it, it adds to the chassis development and you know that whole sort of quest for more tire life. So you're not just out there blasting new sets of sticky tires on it and it's just all about speed. The driver actually has to make the tire last and uh, the engineers have to make a car that's it's light on its feet. What, I mean, seems kind of dumb but because, but because you, I guess, would Actually, it doesn't seem dumb. What are the things you do as a driver to make a tire last longer without losing a lot of pace? No, it's 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 a tough question. It's a good one. Um, first of all, your your right foot just you know jumping into the throttle, whether you have traction control or not. Um, there there are all those guys that want to point and squirt, but the way that you sort of balance your feet, whether you're a left foot breaker or not, in transitions of rolling the throttle on, rolling the brake off, how you sort of dump weight off of a given corner will add to your tire life. Also, how you utilize a tire when it's at its best, at its peak. So. You drop off the jacks in WEC, for instance, we have tire warmers. So you go out of the pits with hot tires that are brand new and you know those first few laps are going to be 
mega because the the pressures are up because they've preheated the tire so they don't have to wait for the tire to grow and uh, if you hammer the curbs when you're not right at tire pressure and you really use that extra few tenths to get the best lap of your stint or the best lap of the race you're going to pay at the end of the stint so it's how you kind of bring the tire into its its own um, peak that that really determines how it'll last so if you could go the first three laps like kind of like work that tires way up instead of just like going Oh, new personal record, fresh tires, yes. Yeah. You know, that sort of. But, so what's the difference in, like, percentage? I mean, not that you have to do the math. I know you don't like math. But, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, was, you know, is that maybe a, a lap or two early later that you got to come in to change tires? Or is it just? Um, Yeah, probably not cutting the stint early, but you'll just see bigger lap time oh, drops. Right. So everything we're working off of is an average stint time. So even though you do want to put in a, a great number because everybody watches the screen and we're all human and we want to see fast lap times, when the analysis comes back after a six hour race and you, you analyze a driver's performance or a car versus another manufacturer's car, you're looking at what that stint over an hour or so yeah. on a fuel burn really was. So if you take an extra three tenths to, to have a fast lap at the beginning on a cold tire, consider it a cold muscle and you want to just pound a bunch of weight and you're not warmed up versus um kind of getting your muscles warm before you you lean on the tire um you're gonna it's a net loss for sure because yeah. those last let's call it 10 <clears throat> laps you're losing half a second a lap even though you put a big yeah. number up so your three tenths now costs you five or six seconds later Correct. yeah wow. that makes sense yeah. have you been following do you um do you ever like fuck with street tires or not not so i mean obviously not in race cars but like you know you have a series of vehicles like if you do you try different tires like yeah what do you like right now yeah it's funny you asked that the last time i drove street tires on a test was when we were out at the desert with oh the, you were uh, at PS4 the uh, ps4s yeah. which is a lovely tire yeah don't have to i was i was on the journalist side of the table it was great because we sat right? at the table and drank don perion yeah. like, <laughs> waiting for our 10 course meal to come yeah, where normally yeah, i'm outside you know talking about what i'm gonna do sitting right seat or whatever is, dinner, he's like, is this so. fucking normal yeah. <laughs> that's like here's how you do it <laughs> yeah. here's what here's how you grease them you know? yeah. <laughs> There's like you don't get your glass never gets half empty and they're just like yeah. you know, five star Michelin <laughs> one star Michelin uh, two star whatever um, <laughs> so yeah especially on vintage cars um, I have a certain sort of passion for feeling uh, a certain tire but I also have this juxtaposition of I want a tire to look old school I don't want to put a low profile modern uh, tread pattern on a, a car from the 80s so yeah. um, you know talking about sort of these collections that have been uh, re -relaun relaunched uh, with different uh, construction different uh, compounds things like that it's, it's fun to work on but not really as a developer we're just too busy on racing to do street street tire development but certainly playing around town on it yeah the uh, so what do you buy like the 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 vintage look yeah like Coker stuff or something well so like Pirelli like, has one right yeah the CN thirty yeah, six which it. was kind of the OG mid seventies or early seventies tire that was being delivered on a lot of the cars um, they modern rubber. Uh, yeah, they re-released it, um, like, you know, with with great construction updates, but still that original mold. So to the naked eye, it looks like the car rolled off the OEM showroom, but it has a lot more structure in the shoulder uh, compound is a little more versatile. And that was one thing I really underestimated that is kind of 101 for you guys. But thinking about street tires and, you know, compounds and what that versatility and operational Mm -hmm. uh, windows of, mm -hmm. of temperature was interesting and then the other thing I learned on that especially PS if you live somewhere where it gets really cold then it, then it makes a big yeah. much bigger difference than in LA yeah or you're in the top of uh, Mulholland in the oh. morning and mm -hmm. it's got a little bit of fog going and you want to just you know upper shoot big, down the upper hill. big Tahunga at sunrise there's frost and shit up there yeah yeah, yeah. and you're on this killer track tire that looks the business <laughs> yeah, like, these triple eights are really yeah, sticky just like <laughs> skating all over the place yeah well it just doesn't the tires is rock hard I mean the rubber's not even in a window it's not even awake so yeah that that part was interesting and then you know how they they develop tread patterns and and compounds for that lateral load so mm -hmm. you know the harder you lean into the tire the different type of footprint you're getting out of the tire versus just riding around on the inside of the camber on a normal street driving act what is this cn36 pirelli yeah is that did they make it with you know fatty sidewall vintage style but with yeah, modern compound yeah it's like a 70 series sidewall okay uh, so really it's for tall. like 15s right like yeah it's a yeah. 185 like 14, yeah. 70 15, well because yeah. i i we need to get new tires for the <clears throat> the kit cobra i built with my dad and my brother because the tires are 10 years old and they're the old bfgs which you know just 
We've done burnouts for 10 years and then the same tires. <laughs> like they, don't, they don't really move. Yeah. So not only are they bald, they were but like, they're hard. No, they were like 10 years 750 old. tread wear new. You know? Yeah, because even when they're brand new, they're hard as fuck. So yeah. I want to get new tires that have a little bit more modern grip but what and is more it, shoulder. But 280? I mean, it's got to be a big, big tire. It's, it's probably, probably like a 280 a, or a 305. 285 rear, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, with thick, thick sidewall. But it'd be good if, if some modern technology trickled down to the muscle car. Somebody arena, makes that great. shit, dude. There's yeah. so many Cobras around. Somebody makes that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've 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 re relaunched a lot of the old molds, which is cool. I mean, Michelin did did a great tire as well. So there's there's a quite a few of them out there. It's great. Old 911s are not scary at all in real on really good tires. Yeah, They're tires are a big game there. And then yeah. you know, getting the torsion bar sway bar set up correct is, mm. is a big one because you got a lot of weight back there and and balancing that. Well, your car like. Fun. It doesn't have a lot of power, so with good not, tires, you know, it just yeah. it sticks. Yeah, my car sticks really nice. Yeah, man. you could throw it in; it's good. It doesn't I'm excited have the to best do steering feel. Of, it's very good. Yeah. And once the floor hinge pedals, once you start using them, you wonder why anyone does it anywhere. There's a lot of things. That car is now my most fuel efficient car. It's my most comfortable car in terms of seating position. Um, it's it's my probably the most engaging car to to actually drive more so than the Mustang even. Really. Um, I think so. Why? Wow. Um, the Mustang, like, it has like a lot of travel. Like, it it sorts more shit out actually than the 911 does. 911 is kind of stiff. 911 is yeah. a little stiff, and it's partially because I bought it with 17 inch wheels on it. Like, it's got mm. like uh, those replica. It's like the ones that Singer uses those wheels. Um, but uh, and they're nice wheels, but they were just on it. I'm, and we're doing Safari, so the Safari is really like where it's fucking at i know why you're building these things they're fun as shit especially in la you know you, you're driving one lane to the other coming over at culver in, in playa del rey i mean you you Bro. don't mind which which lane you're in because you can just hit everything and i sort of had that light bulb of maybe this is why everybody drives raised pickup trucks day like, of driving i've ever had because loose surface like you don't expect that that car will turn in but then it does which is really weird and then it rotates but then there's no snapback right it just goes out and then comes back like yeah. it's the best. Yeah, two wheel drive, rear wheel, sorry, rear wheel, two wheel drive with a rear engine. You've got that ability to put it in yaw and hold it sideways and think that I'm good and just think you have the best car control and that you can just put a car right where you want it. Yeah. It just makes you a hero uh, <laughs> overnight. And it so really it's, does. it's a lot of fun. I, I, I mean, I, Lee took me up this dirt trail and then I, five minutes later, I'm sideways on a single track road with trees there in like. A borrowed 911 like why is that happening that doesn't make sense mm. and then by the end of the day i'm like rah, rah. <laughs> yeah yeah you're just and like, i go full how, how much is this again yeah, exactly. you know i'll call you yeah you know and and it's like you know that it's a the car i bought it's like a lovely little car but the a safari car is way better than a standard 87 carrera by like so much even on the road like even on tarmac I was, I was surprised the first time I drove Lee's car, um, you know, it doesn't have a lot of road noise from the tire. It doesn't have a ton of roll. I mean, I started thinking about trophy trucks where mm -hmm. you turn and you're basically on three wheels because there's just so much body roll and they don't run sway bars. And you, you can still leave quite a bit of roll support in the car and yeah. it's going to make traction. It's going to climb. Um, you know, we can drive them up, you know, fire roads and goat trails and they, they have awesome. good traction. It's not like you, as soon as you get in a loose surface, you're scared about being stuck. I'd like to uh, go up to Pismo and romp it. Yeah, hell on the sand. sand. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I drove Lee's car down the highway as well. And if you're not trying to push the limits of handling, like, it feels like a 911. Yeah. Like, it just, it doesn't feel that different. Like, it's not like there's, like, those BFG ATs are designed uh, to be quiet on the road and not, like, vibrate -y and not, you know, shitty on the road. They're, mm -hmm. they're, primarily a road tire that can also go off-road and so uh, that picture of lee's car made me so jealous <laughs> and so excited uh, on the show with joey when he was here uh, as well as uh, with uh tim and someone else while they were here but um tell me about lift auto yeah we wanted to dive a little deeper on this last one so we sent the engine to gamroth and uh you know he put itbs on it and Ooh, give it, put, good. put a little massaging into it and basically we were just <laughs> able to picture hold it at higher revs longer we put a tighter gear stack in it so uh Much, yeah so the first through fourth becomes shorter right uh, second like, through fourth second great. through fourth yeah i like that a lot because yeah, you know we run an, an <clears throat> limited slip and then um 
you know, we don't go crazy because you don't have a lot of traction. You don't need a ton of horsepower. Another pro uh, to the sort of safari movement, love it or hate it, is you don't need to build a massive engine to yeah. have fun because you're sliding around in second, third gear. We just were up at Big Sky, uh, which is kind of a private movie ranch. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, we dropped a video where we just went up there with Zwart and Emery and the, the usual suspects and flogged the Lift Auto 2. And Zwart the posted, yellow one, too? Yeah, yeah. yeah he posted a, uh, like a hand shot. I think Joey took it, and he's just ripping up this hill. And it, I think we were bottom of third gear now that we've got a tighter stack and uh yeah just i mean it's dry in southern california but it makes for great photography he wants to see this car pushed not just uh you oh, know he's to, watching to these here's, videos here's your and sword. doing some yeah, very dirty things under the table <laughs> with his other hand that isn't using the mouse there's good audio this on is that definitely one, one of these guys that's at home whacking off with pat long mobbing on his car i know these people they call me i know them oh jeez oh that's glorious Wait, Zach, that video didn't make it into the feed. Put that in oh. the in the show, sir. You know, we go full coil over um, motorsport derived KW suspension, uh, three way adjustable. So we spend a, a, quite a bit of money on the suspension side, and then this time with the gearbox and the engine massaging, those are yeah. where we we jumped in a little deeper. Um, we did a full down bare metal respray because uh, the 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 guy we were building the car for he's like we let's do something throwback a crazy color so um you know signal yellow was kind of og I was, I was so. about to do that and then there was an uproar i have to keep cassis red oh yeah we can get into that debate again but uh <laughs> you're, you're gonna be just fine there on that i one. like no no it, it's grown on me yeah. the yellow is very nice what color was that car originally uh that was white um, it was an 87 you don't feel bad a, painting a white yeah we rescued it off the <clears> pelican <throat> Uh, Pelican same, parts. Same, that's where I got yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was not not so pretty. No, no. I mean, if you're gonna do a build like you're gonna do, where the motor is coming out and the gearbox is coming out, and you're going coil over, like, all right, fine. Buy, you know, a, what? Can I ask? Am I allowed to ask you what you paid for that car? Uh, it was a G50 car originally. Yeah, I think I think we paid like twenty eight. Oh something. wow, you got it. Well, you got it cheap. Yeah. The yeah. the um. The owner buys the car and delivers it, as you mm-hmm, know. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, it was it was something high, higher miles. But mileage. was it was the body straight? Yeah, it was straight. It hadn't no been rush. hit, no rust, no okay. none of that. So well, that's a good body, decent driver. Yeah. yeah. See, I I don't I, I I didn't I could have, but to rebuild to go from the, where you paid for that ver, or what the owner paid for that versus what I paid for mine to rebuild an engine would cost more than that difference. Yeah, so, when you get into resealing and yeah. pulling it apart, you're going to spend that in hours mm-hmm. uh, anyways, but the the conversion or turnaround is going to be way it's going to be a w- way longer build as well. Yeah. So you're going to yeah. see your car when the golden the golden question. It will. goes to Batim on January 6th. Okay. And then he has it for about a month and a half doing the motor. Okay. Uh, and then it goes to Lee uh, hopefully at the end of uh, February, beginning of March. And then the idea is it's done for Pebble. Nice. Or before, hopefully, like a week before Pebble, so I can go out to the desert and get it super fucking dirty and drive it to Pebble, like looking like that picture nice. on the Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it that doesn't count. Pull that up, it Zach. doesn't count. Just, you, like, it has to be. Luft Auto 1 and 2. How did they compare? Because I, I talked with Joey a bit about the fact that you guys changed up the suspension from 1 to 2, and obviously gearing and motor. How did the two of them compare as far as driving them off road? Well, that's again. I, I can tell you what I want out of a car. I can tell you what's better and what's worse. But I'm not going to pretend that I'm of a suspension guru. I mean, Joey knows no, exactly I'm- what it is. But I can tell you when we went up to Big Sky with Lift Two, there that that sort of light load grip when you just need direction change and you're on loose gravel and you have that response. That's where you're working on when you spend money in damping for off-road that's really what you feel the first time i drove a global rally cross car i could not believe how much grip it made off-road and then when you get onto the pavement sections it doesn't roll over like an off-road truck Uh. so you basically are building science into different loads in the damper to where it kind of has a dual personality so it's giving you platform in normal road condition driving but then if you go and jump you get a lot more suspension travel you can sort of build three specs into a damper when you start spending that money can you make it change direction while it's kind of getting light you mean yeah well there i mean again so you've got different velocities in a, in a damper so when when it sees a, a quick movement you can adjust high speed versus low speed which is more of your platform when you're seeing sort of more of that ch- chassis roll or or dynamic driving so you're sort of 
tuning two different things. So if you hit a jump and you want to make sure that you're not going to bottom out, um, you can tune that side. But then for daily driving, you don't have this super stiff car that makes no grip on loose gravel when you're not really leaning on it hard. So you've kind of got those, those two objectives off road is, is travel and big hits versus making grip when you're not leaning on it and you're just in a second gear corner trying to get it to turn. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. totally. So that well, was an improvement from yeah. one to two. Yeah, and we widen the front track uh, for more. It, get, it starts to get into engineering angles, and when you have suspension travel and what's happening on the camber gain and camber loss and all of the, the kinematic side of it that I, I can tell you what it needs, but I can't tell you how to make it do that. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, well, as a racing driver, that's the job. If you can... Elo- if you can uh, Put into words what it needs. Amazing. Yeah, amazingly usually, ironic moment. Amazing. Fi- yeah, I can't <laughs> find words to say put into words. <laughs> yeah, you got to be able to talk about pitch and squat Fucking and asshole. roll and and curve <laughs> strikes, but you don't you don't need to get into um, displacement of oil and uh, you know the the barometric pressure of you know the, the, the turbo. So. so are you taking orders for these things? Um, we're just having fun. Um, <laughs> I. It's it's a it's a vague question, but it's a real answer. Um, or sorry, it's a vague answer, but it's a real answer. Yes, we are building on a case by case basis, depending on what the idea is. The phone has been ringing off the hook for all wheel drive, and that's been oh. sort of the roundtable discussion. What does Swartz say? He says it's he says it's a totally different experience. And you mm-hmm. back to this two wheel drive, rear wheel drive, rear engine, you yeah. don't feel like a hero to get it sideways and to hold it sideways. Yeah. You got to be going way faster, way more committed, way more horsepower. Yeah. It, it, it's just like, he's like, why would you even go down that rabbit hole? That's what I, that's what he said to me roughly at Trankus. He's like, it's less f- like you can go faster, yeah. but it's less fun. Yeah. Also hard to find the gear ratios that you need for a C4 conversion. Um, I think that's why the the one we saw at SEMA, they supercharged because rather than making the gears, they just put a bunch of torque into it, that's which a, yeah. if you have an open checkbook, you can do that. But I think there's something, the, the simplistic side of a G-Body yeah. uh, Safari rally, whatever, it, it's not costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the job done and just go beat it on is it. if you, you do, do it. it. Uh, we're keeping Fuchs wheels. I mean, there's not going to be, it's not going to be that crazy, actually. Yeah, I think, again, suspension and engine is where you're really, and of course, if you're going on the full paint science, that's a that's another whole journey of discussion. Yeah. But what are you doing to the engine? Uh, but Tim is doing 964 cams, a Steve Wong tune, headers, exhaust, and then a light flywheel and clutch. Okay, cool. And that's about it. So yeah, you're keeping it, Mel. You're not going Yeah, no, we just nuts. I just want it to be a little snappier. It's compared to the three liter that Lee had, it's like a little sluggish. Mm-hmm. And I just want it to be a little snappier. That's no all. gear ratios. I, I have not I mean, he's, frankly, he's thinking I've, about it this now. This is where it starts. <laughs> you, know, you, no, come, you come in, you think, oh, I'm you know, dude, the a, house I, a custom me this transmission much. or a custom ratios in a transmission has been a dream of mine since like 2002. I don't know in college. I don't know. Look it up, but like what does everything. that option cost? I don't know, but it is everything. <laughs> it's got to be so expensive. It's not as expensive as getting into building up engines and dropping four way. Because I mean, massive. The, when I drove Lee's car, now he had a 915 gearbox, not a G50, but I mean, the same. It, the, the ratios aren't all that different. It was a lot of top of first and bog second, and I would really have preferred. You got to do it to have been in second. Oh no! I'll, I'll, I'll donate a uh, hundred bucks. <laughs> 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 what do you, got? Well, you can do a crowdfunding yeah. for gear crowd ratios. Funny. Yeah, do a crowdfunding for it. Did you also? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm a, no, no. I'm going on record. Like, no. <laughs> No, don't do it. Don't no, crowd. No, don't, don't crowd. No, because then you'll have a bunch of people no. walk up and say, "I own a part of this." Car. I know you wouldn't do no. it. Just do Patreon. Those people are assholes. I yeah. only brought that, that up because of what you put out on Instagram. Do you, like, do you, you want me to leave this thing, which you're now leaving? I did. Yeah, no, they no, vote no, with their dollars. You, you know what, dude? These people were cockbags about this, <laughs> and and I said that under. I've said it on the show before, but on the under. All I was going on was the for sale ad pictures, yeah. which were the worst pictures were, ever taken of That's what that you sent car. me. Yeah, I was like, ooh, I'm not sure yeah. about that. They the were, pictures they, that I take of the car are fucking great. He must have had a, like a red filter on it or something. <laughs> no, he shot it with a potato. I don't <laughs> know. In direct sunlight, that car looks a little pink. I don't yeah. know. And I yeah. think that's when he shot it. It was direct sunlight. I saw the, the photos and... Very pink. It's, it's got 87, some pink. dude. Yeah, it's got some pink. It's perfect. But he, but it really looked like pink, like 
fucking Claire's beauty products yeah, yeah, pink yeah. in his yeah. pictures as opposed to something that's a little more subtle and and shifty like it really is. I heard you talking about aubergine. You or Spike? I think No, that was Spike. Okay, he loves like, a fucking eggplant. Oh, I thought one of you hated it. No, Spike likes oh, see, eggplant. I have an aubergine I and I Your I car think is it's, very pretty. I, I'll take I'll take it. It's like black almost in low light and then in on high light you see kind of the deep purple or whatever. They have some of those cool colors. My dad had an 86 Prussian blue. And Prussian, Prussian blue. I never it's, knew how to pronounce that. Uh, it's pronounce a, Prussia. It's P-R- a Prussian really? blue. Yeah, it's a um, it's a eighty. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Come what on. was your version of Prussian blue? <laughs> yeah, it's Prussia. King it's, of Prussia. It's a the mall in, outside of Philly. King of Prussia Mall. No, no. What? Can no. you Google that color, Zach? Prussian blue. It's like a dark metallic with some purple in it, and so, and his car was blue with blue interior, and at night it would look almost like a dark purple metallic like and then that? during the daytime um you got to see it on the car it's not exact yeah that's not exact we, we google prussian blue is like a, oh there we go yeah oh that's a lovely color it's, it's a, a good color it's a Hold really that cool that's color a, that's a fucking great color and and it changes no. it has a metallic and it changes Wait, color depending on the light so it's um, coming up slowly it's pretty rare it's not it's a rad. Zach, it was i think it's a one or two right year there. only color but porsche did lots of those like i actually i wrote a piece on your your one take of your car uh-huh. and the cassis red was one of like 22 colors they offered but like how many people were buying that color uh, nobody so um it's pretty rare same thing with prussian blue they they just that didn't make that many very of them. very pretty color though Good that, color, on that, that car. color is a winner so that's my dad's car looked exactly like that without the whale tail that that's is a good my exact right that's there, exactly right? my yeah. how my car looks 17 inch fuchs Whale tail. That's that, my car. That exactly. That's exactly what I was trying to convince you to leave your car. Put a st- put some stance in it. It has it liven already. it up a little bit. No, that thing's that's definitely that tucked a bit more than that's, yours. It is that's, slammed. And then and then I was trying to convince him. Let's get you another G model. For, yeah, yeah. for the rally car. But. I I like your idea. We should Look, do that. I like you my just car, said it's the my, most fuel efficient, most comfortable, and you're gonna is. go and take it away from yourself that doesn't for really change months, it that months. that much it doesn't change the fuel efficiency it'll get that more much, comfortable and it certainly will be more comfortable you think oh yeah, yeah. all the purists yeah. are like don't hack it and i was like hey what's hacking there's it? no you're fucking not cut, hacking you're not cutting you guys aren't you, you don't cut anything sun, you're not doing sunroof delete no okay so yeah there's not there's no cutting you also cutting. live once and there's like uh, there's plenty of 911s in the world so i think the purists saying don't hack it how many of the purists own suck. a 911 or don't and if no. they don't they have no leg to stand on if they do they have one already they're peanut you know? gallery pat knows because he's driven them mm-hmm. and he builds them and he knows but it they're great they are a safari yeah. 911 is more fun to own than that Regular street 911. Yes, and more versatile. Yeah, so that's why I want it. Not as pure. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. need you to be need as both. pure. I don't need, need pure. Both. He said you need both, and I agree. I don't need pure. There's a couple only a couple things I need to be pure, <laughs> and one of them isn't my car. <laughs> <laughs> I need my drugs and my women to be pure. <laughs> You're like I have the my car can in my be a life dirty, covered. dirty hoe. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I'd rather have the woman be a bit of a safari car. <laughs> <laughs> lifted and dirty is that gonna be kind of lifted Versatile. and dirty with a rack yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> jesus i like your cars. get that t-shirt as it works <laughs> lifted and dirty with a rack that's actually uh that's a good Vers- t-shirt versatile you know is, goes outside plays in the dirt you heard it here is, folks is that a position we don't know about or, or a terminology like oh so you, do you use safari that's gonna be kind of thing. I don't like the word safari. I'm more not like as a rally, verb, but rally yeah. car. When people ask me, I say rally car. Yeah, yeah. Because safari, I mean that there's kind of the holy grail of still the the East African safari. Yeah, that's like long I'm going haul. to take my Porsche and go shoot some elephants. <laughs> are, you <laughs> are you coming? Are you tempted to try some shit like that? Yeah, I want to. I want to go up and do. It's called below zero. Oh uh, yeah, so yeah. Tuttle, Tuttle does, does that. Yeah. a oh, the- frozen <laughs> experience in old school 911s uh-huh. in Finland or wherever. And yeah. other than being useless in the cold, I just don't like being cold. I'm freezing right now, but yeah. um, it's just it, it's awesome because you're on a frozen lake bed. There's not a lot to hit. It'd be and the best, you're just man. Ragging other people's stuff. Yeah, that's the best part. But the safari rally seems legit. It seems yeah. like the craziest thing that, you know. Yeah, I don't know how many days it is, but I mean, there's some legit drivers and hardcore, yeah, elements, let's say, not hitting animals is one of the priorities. Also not going Whoa. way too fast over jumps that you don't know what's on the other end. So That's that's sort of the thing I was <laughs> stage. <laughs> Chris so, Harris has been having fun in England. I think oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think he, he went to skiing, Tuttle, right? Oh, he, just, and he, he, he did a video about, about that, skiing. right? For Drive? Where Zach just pulled this up. Chris Harris bought a three an old three fifty six, and I, but he's but he's with Tuttle, 
and he's a. Uh, <laughs> it's it's snowed in there. This is straight out of the wheel. old '50s Porsche uh, f- photography that you see. Where there's there's That's like awesome. a group of them on lake beds. Oh. I really liked uh, when it snowed a couple years ago in Manhattan and people were snowboarding and shit behind cars down in down like Second Avenue. Uh-huh. That's a that seems like so much fun to me. That guy's having a good time. Good for Harris. And oh, that'd be the best. I got we we got snowed in once at Kirkwood. Me and three friends in high school, mm-hmm. like Avalanche on Highway 50, could not get out for two days. Like we had to stay there for two extra days. But it was like I think it was like a weekday, and a lot of people had gotten out. So we went driving around because we're 16, and we have a parents' <laughs> Grand Cherokee. Of course, you did. and uh, we just skitched off the back. We we're snowboarding behind each <laughs> yeah. other, dragging each other back up and down around like all the resort. And the only people out were maintenance workers with you know snow plows and, and bulldozers, and they're like, "What are you guys doing?" And you know, just, just barging. It's Dumb great. Kids being awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah. I would still do it now. <laughs> yeah. I still do believe that if you grow up uh, driving in the snow, your car control, you, you're you're ahead of the curve. I mean, this, the old Scandinavian, why, why were they so good in Formula One? And I think that, yeah, just, you know, you're bored. You're out in a shopping center on the weekend, just drifting the hell out of yeah. your Bovo station, right? Or whatever. I think I uh, most of what I learned too. about sliding and stuff was because I lived in Colorado, mm-hmm. you know, because it's low speed. It, it's like uh, safari stuff. It's low speed sliding. There's a lot more cushion. Sometimes, literally, I did slide into a, a few, like, <laughs> a, few, a few plow, uh, whatever, snow, snow bluffs, embankments. Yeah. yeah. Good English, Zach. <laughs> yeah. Really well done, sir. Yeah. I slid it in. I slid it into a big pile of snow <laughs> that had been placed there by the skies. Yeah. A- apparently, that's a thing when, when you get cars that come from snow areas to check the roof for rollover. Really? Cause, yeah, because when you have really heavy snow, you can just go off like the roads are domed, right? Funk. You just roll into a ditch. And the thing didn't sit on its roof. It just rolled on it. Right. But it's got structural roof damage. Soft landing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How tall are you and how tall are the cars you're yeah, shopping check, for? What like, kind I of feel like, how do you not see the roof of a car? For roof damage. Actually, we, we know some people that had a story where uh, they dented the roof of a car when they returned it. I think it was a rental car. The person who worked at the rental place was too short to see the roof. <laughs> <laughs> so... I guess this does happen. Allegedly, this, does happen. this happened. Allegedly, the statute so, of limitations has most likely expired. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to say who it was. We just know that this happened. What was funny was the story goes: this car that was returned was not an SUV. This was a normal <laughs> sedan, and the person that checked it in just happened to be like four foot eight. <laughs> and what was this person doing on the roof of that said car? Dancing. Oh, or nice. so it goes. Good, oh. good, good, good. <laughs> really sober dancing, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Nice>. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> what else is there to do? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, what else is going on, you guys, in your in the racing life, the glamorous life, the world's fastest ginger? You driven GT2 RS? No, and I kind of feel like a... Why are they leaving you out? I know. Uh, we were there last week for our year-end functions and galas and it was snowing on that day and uh the rumor is that someone might have had an off in one of the test cars oh, a really? few Ooh. weeks pre- prior so i didn't go to no. andy to ask for the keys to, <laughs> to our s development car so rumors it looks, it looks fast rumors. it looks it looks very it looks nice. great what do you what are the what uh what loaner are you driving right these days they hook you up i'm in a 911 gts mm. um mm. They're nice. Very nice. Yeah. Um, just ripping around town. I haven't been in a 911 as a company car in over 10 years. I've been in four-door segments just cruising to the airport with a bunch of baggage. But yeah. uh, I was like, hey, you know what? Who knows how long my contract's going to last? So I'm just going to yeah. spec out a nice, you know, GT Silver, you know, no emblems, no no graphics, and just run around LA. And it's, it's fun. I mean, everybody talked about, oh, what's going to happen when everything goes to PDK? What's going to happen when... Uh, everything goes to turbo, but I'm liking turbo both of those rips, right now. Doesn't it? Yeah, it's good. And, and you uh, can lug it around and let the turbos do the work. So. Mm-hmm. I forgive you for getting PDK in Los Angeles. Sorry, I, I forgive you. Yeah, the, uh, my I'm driving GTS to and from the airport. Was a stick and it was awesome though. It was really nice. I we were talking uh, about the GT3 options with the new mm-hmm. GT3 PDK versus uh, manual, and and it wasn't just about the driving experience, but the cars were behaving differently as well uh we were testing both of the new generation two gt3 up at thunder hill and i felt that the manual car on the way into the corner wasn't as stable but it rotated better and it just felt a bit more light and agile so i was kind of 
kind of vibing on the manual. So the coming back that direction. The manual does actually weigh less, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It's and like the diff f- operates differently as well. Oh, yeah. It, it, doesn't get the, it doesn't get the smart diff. It no, has it, has a less, regular, right. it has a regular mechanical diff. Oh, okay. And, yeah, so yeah. no torque vectoring then. No, you need to have PDK to get that. I believe that's correct. It only correct. works with PDK. You definitely huh. have more... Uh, or sorry, less lock or preload feel as you enter the corner. The rear is kind of there with you rather than super stable. Um, in the PDK, it felt a lot more like, locked down. Those cars feel like you can just push them to infinity. Like they feel so stable that the PDK GT3s. Yeah. I, I, I drove one that uh, BBI did a bunch of their suspension work on it. It was on slicks and it, on normal roads, you just feel like you like twisty back roads. Like you can just yeah, push and push and push and push forever, and it never unsticks. It never feels unstable. Like it's just incredible. And <laughs> it's the first street car I've ever driven. I had a press car and might have pushed it a little hard up the snake. And it's the first street car I was like, all right, I've had my fun. I hadn't gotten to the edge of the car, and I already felt like this is pretty quick going up. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty un- unreal that you can take a car and hammer it all day at that level mm-hmm. not only can you take it on a lap and sort of you know wring its neck but you can just all day long hammer the hell out of it so. i feel like if you i feel like the difference in resale between the sticks and the pdks are going to be huge though you're going to get so much money back on the sticks so much because the set that's what the second hand market's going to want yeah that's sure. what everybody's waiting for on this yeah. on the gen 2 right now so. yeah now might be a good time to buy a 9911 GT3. They're reasonable. Did you see that silver, uh, I guess it's a GT3 touring at the LA Auto Show yeah. on the stand? It's fire. Mm-hmm. It's, the, the touring is dope. I'm about that wing delete. I really like and that. And just classic yeah. silver, everything. I mean, even the wheels, you think sometimes they would go with a black or a whatever the, the darker um, mm-hmm. titanium look wheel was, but just straight Shadow silver. chrome. <laughs> silver wheel, <laughs> silver, GT silver, metallic, whatever the... the it was, that was very was nice. Like, is there, you got a, Something is there a picture so, of it? So classic about a silver 911. Yeah, I agree. Super clean. Uh, that, or a cassis red. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that with all German cars. Audi, yeah. I mean, even Merc. You B- know, B- BMW's, oh, my silver yeah. SL is like, pff, it look, it look, it's got that carved from one block of metal. That's what yeah. the, the silver works for that. But I like I believe in but getting uh, cheap cars in crazy colors and then expensive cars in subtle colors. That's how I, I like to roll. I'm I'm there. I would I'd be the guy with like a gray Ferrari, you know. But I want a nitrous blue Focus RS. I you know. I yeah. I'd go with that. Which I finally get back Monday. I have shoes. I have made exactly three wow payments since I last drove my oh, Focus geez. RS. <laughs> it's been at Mountain. It got. Uh, K, they were testing it. KW's uh, dynamic suspension for the Focus RS. Nice. So, so is that full like magnetic, or is it just it's adjustable not magnetic. on the fly? It's, or? it's uh, adaptive coilovers. Oh, okay. With different drive modes, works with the OEM drive modes. Sweet. And, uh, it's a very high quality adaptive shock. The kit's like four Gs. Wow. But the car finally rides properly. And the holdup was the first prototype set had lowering springs on it. Hmm. And I don't want to drive a lowered Focus RS. Yeah. I don't have no flat bill. <laughs> I don't have no vape box. Purely aesthetic, you didn't want a lowered Focus Not RS. Not purely aesthetic. I didn't want to bottom out in LA where you have these weird angles and stuff all over the place. I didn't, I wanted them. So it took a while to get the correct springs. But Your now car's have, not going to be parked as well as everybody else, though. I won't be yeah. parked quite as hard. You're not going to win. You I'll be drive soft it. parked, not hard parked. <laughs> once once your car comes back, uh, you're 911, you won't, you won't, you'll sell the focus rs well when the lease is up i oh he, I, he would get rid of it leased, right yeah, now yeah. i would i would have <laughs> sold it already honestly what's the suspension called i want to look it up for people. kw uh ddc dynamic damper control i wonder uh, if that does that adjust that's like yep. like the the dsc systems where they like <laughs> no. stiffen up the front and patrick do you did you talk do we talk about dsc last time you're here do you know them mike levitas I know, yeah, yeah, isn't it TPC? TPC yeah, and yeah. DSE, right. same company, okay. confusing nomenclature. I only know him as a, 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 a kind of a journeyman racing driver who's yeah. fast. But he is fast. Yeah, I don't know specifically. So he's got a kit that, that is a, a little computer box that's like the size of a Apple TV, basically, that goes in and plugs into any adaptive damper system, and it's a G-meter, and it 
turns your passive damping system into an active damping system Great. based on G-force and, and load. Love it. And it works with all Porsche. Hmm. And it works with uh, the, oh, anything with magnetic ride, Z06, Viper, CTSV, um, Shelby GT350, and they're developing one for Focus RS as well, which I'm for very excited to use only, that. right? No, it's legit, dude. Uh-huh. It's totally legit. It's awesome. It's they, it, it transforms the car. Cayman GT4 with that shit. Oof. I, shit I believe good. it. We were we were using a Nerders um, on a crazy build that that we did for um, the level five. Uh, some people know about this nine nine six turbo that was built with no no, no budget no budget. <laughs> and there were Nerders in that, and I didn't know what a Nerders did. But you what's know, a Nerders? I've never heard like of a, a Nerders like a, or a G valve. So basically, in pitch, it registers the uh, sort of movement or velocity of hard braking and mm-hmm. stops the pitch or the big time travel versus when you're in sort of lateral movements or hitting curbs it has that multiple personality again so it's essentially what sounds that's like what mike's this does. doing that's what this electronically does we yeah. were doing inside the build of the, the damper. oh wow, wow that's crazy mechanically yeah through, through actual g valves that wow cost? jesus Rid- christ again there was zero bu- budget on that build i, I this couldn't thing imagine twelve hundred dollars oh that's and it goes in and it, it'll go in any any car with magnetic rider adaptive so you're just flashing your electronic damping it's a different brain. yeah yeah no it's a di- it's physically a different brain you're not flashing it you're it's like a having a piggyback ecu mm-hmm. kind of thing mm-hmm. but I've, the cars I've driven have been excellent. I will continue to give him many free plugs for that. For this, it's technology. interesting. They make their own dampers. Um, that company specifically, Tractive. yeah, yeah. yeah. So they make tractive dampers. Yeah. Joey Seely actually put a set on a black uh, roof. Uh huh. And um, I think the setup was fine, but like they didn't have instructions. They didn't have wiring. So like Joey became the guinea pig huh. to sort the car out. And he knows his way around suspension, as we both know. And he was just like, man, it's just it's a learning curve. But overall, in the end, having these adjustable dampers, the customer is super happy to yeah. have a nine six four roof that now has comfortable suspension. Yeah. yeah. And it it's uh, a lot of those full build type things they do in house there. It, it's rare for them to ship oh, all the parts yeah, yeah, and then yeah. have someone else do it so that's probably why there's no instructions yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um we actually have to wrap this up i'm sorry because i have to go to an appointment but i'm so happy you could come what Thanks do you want to plug me. are you are you here to plug anything no or are you just hanging out no i'm just here to talk, talk awesome. cars and hang out that's great yeah plug you want to plug anything no just <laughs> buy a porsche <laughs> We'll what put you your mean? social media shit in the, in the PL in the, Motorsport. Follow me on Instagram, and uh, we'll be in IMSA racing this year uh, in the GT3, GTD, GT3 class. But so what is see the you call? at Daytona the, Rolex 24 G, last week of January. I'm excited. This you're season's going to be there. Begun. Am I going to be there? Yeah. At Daytona? Yep. Oh, you're flying really? us out? Yep. I like it. You're going to hear about it? <laughs> I'll come. Sending Lollipops me, is open the, again. Uh, G5. <laughs> lollipops What's lollipops? Again. The strip club in Daytona. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> what could it possibly be? <laughs> it's Listen, a gentleman affairs. Eighty dollar bottle service. It's all you need to know. <laughs> in Daytona, you're a baller. Yeah, eighty dollar baller in Daytona. There it is. Patrick Stevenson, thank yes. you for hanging out. Thank you for having me. Patrick and Patrick. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll plug all the, the social media, the, 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 the things, the things. We'll be back next week. The Smoking Tire Podcast, powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. All you need, something to talk into, something to connect that thing to the internet, and something to say. Oh, you are you got a new NSX, didn't you? Congratulations I on do. that. I yeah. saw it. Do you it's see lovely. it outside? Yeah. yeah. Stock 91? Yeah. What? Lovely. Yeah, I got a 91 NSX that's about to be a project car. I'm very happy for you. Those things Don't are a lot it. of fun. Don't we'll you go check it out. Safari? <laughs> Safari <No>. NSX. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks, man. Thanks. See y'all later.